Today, we're gonna to be talking about the deadlift. It's one of the most fundamental things that we do just as humans, whether that's in the gym or outside, bending over and picking something up is almost unavoidable. And we understand that everybody's built differently and femur length, torso length, and arm length are gonna play a big role in positioning for individuals. But what we're gonna go over today is some of the fundamentals and key points to deadlift with proper form to where one, it's not scary, and two, we're using our posterior instead of our lower back. We teach all sorts of movements in our CrossFit gym, from wall balls, to burpees, to squat cleans, to deadlifts, to snatching. I could keep going on, but what I've noticed is what seems to be the most intimidating movement out of everything that we teach is the deadlift. There's always a lot of apprehension about, I don't wanna hurt my back, but the deadlift does not have to be intimidating. If we're using our hamstrings and our glutes, it's gonna strengthen our posterior, allowing us to feel strong when we're moving objects in everyday life, and also allow us to feel strong when we pick up and put up that, put down that weight in our CrossFit gym. We almost always start teaching the deadlift with a PVC pipe, and it's got a benefit that it's nice and light, it's not gonna fatigue our grip while we're working on our, our positioning. The downside to a PVC pipe though is that we can be bad in bad positions and we're not punished because we don't have gravity or the weight of a barbell letting us know that we're in a challenging position. Once we've got our PVC pipe and the understanding is that we're gonna be learning how to pick something up off the ground, we don't start at the bottom. Once we get below the knee, that's actually the most challenging position to learn the deadlift. So we start from the top down, basically working backwards up until the point where we get to the floor. Starting position in the deadlift is super important. So with our feet, we wanna make sure we're not too wide. So we are gonna be directly under our hips. So it's gonna be slightly more narrow than our squat position. Our toes should be pointed forward and our weight is ideally in our heels, meaning you could wiggle your toes if you needed to, but we're still keeping three points of contact. When I say three points of contact, that means our big toe, our pinking toe, and our heel are all in contact with the floor, with our weight being predominantly in our heels. From there, we're gonna set our hand position. So for our hand position, hands should be about a thumbs width distance from the outside of our thigh. You can choose to go a double overhand grip, or you can choose to flip one palm. That's gonna be personal preference. From here, we're gonna think about pulling our shoulders back and down to activate our lats. In that position, that's gonna help us keep our chest nice and proud. The next step is gonna be to think about reaching your hips back to, towards the wall behind you. And when we reach our hips back, this is gonna keep our shin in a vertical position and it's gonna activate our glutes and our hamstring. So I'm reaching my hips back as far as I possibly can, keeping the PVC pipe glued to my thighs until I reach my knee. In this position, when the PVC pipe gets to my knee, my shoulder is now over my wrist with my hips pushed back instead of tucked under. All right, so one of my favorite cues for actually getting set or initiating the, uh, the movement down for deadlift is thinking about the position we've all been in. When we get home from the grocery, we've got a handful of bags, but our car door is still open. We've all done that thing where we stick our butt back to close the car door, and that is almost the exact same position that we wanna be finding to initiate our deadlift. So one of the most common things that we see that people tend to feel a little bit more comfortable with is they wanna keep their butt underneath their hips. Uh, more like they're squatting the deadlift, and that's one of the most common flaws to initiate the deadlift. No matter what part of the deadlift we're in, a good indicator that we are in a solid hinge position and pushing our hips back is that our shins are vertical and we should be able to see our toes at any point. We're not driving our knees out over our toes. When learning the deadlift top down, we like to pause at the knee position and then focus on dropping our hips and shoulders together to get the bar to our mid shin. At this point, our arms are staying nice and long and our weight is still staying in our heels. Where we get into trouble is by when we're sitting our hips and shoulders down, we think about not keeping that angle together but instead leaving our chest tall and almost squatting the bar towards the floor. The other place we can get into trouble is if we don't leave the PVC pipe or the barbell directly over our shoelaces where that knot in our shoelace is tied, just off of our shin. If we start to let the barbell float out to our toes, it's gonna to be putting a lot of pressure on our back and pulling us forward. A great indicator that we're in a good position and something that should be maintained all the way up as well as all the way back down when we're deadlifting is contact with our skin. So the barbell should literally be dragging your leg the entire way up as well as the entire way down. If you're scraping your shins, that's just kind of part of the deadlift. It should never be floating out and away from the body. So something else that we want to touch on is back position. And our back position is largely going to influence where we're going to feel the deadlift. Meaning whether we're feeling that in our glute and our hamstrings or maybe our lower back. So something that we want to maintain is our lats pulled back and our shoulders back as well. 
that's gonna help make sure that our post here is doing the work. There's a caveat to that as well though, that this is kind of the, the fundamental way to teach a deadlift. And there's a lot of people, even at a high level, that deadlift with a rounded back. And we're aware that that, nece that isn't necessarily a bad thing. But when we can start and maintain a deadlift with a, round, with a round in our back, it is okay. The point where it becomes a problem is when we're deadlifting and our back begins to bend, that is where the problem lies. And we would always much rather see you guys start learning the deadlift with a nice flat back and if there's a change whether that's uh, anatomy related or positional it gets moved to down the road but we don't learn it that way we understand there's many ways to deadlift and there's lots of different schools of thought on how to deadlift this way that we are teaching you we have found really helps people understand how to use their hamstrings and use their glutes and not rely solely on their lower back to lift the bar off the floor it allows them to feel safe and to feel comfortable and to increase their strength when it comes to hamstrings and glutes once we move to the barbell and we're working on picking it up off the floor the first thing we want to think about is where our foot position is in relation to the barbell seems really natural for a lot of people to want to step up and kind of have the bar over top of their toes and what that means is that it's going to be pulling us forward and we've also got more of a tendency to have our knees over top of the barbell to lower down and grab it when we're standing in front of the barbell then when i look down it should be covering the knots of my shoelaces which also indicates to me that it's over the center of my foot the first rep of a deadlift is super important. So we wanna to touch on getting set up and ready to pull the bar up the floor. A lot of times we see people just get really relaxed. They lift the bar up and then they get set at the top ready for the next deadlift. Well, the first lift off the floor was actually a deadlift. So we wanna make sure we are prepared and we are ready to lift the weight off of the floor. So the way I like to teach the setup is we wanna go through an order of operations and get organized. First thing, we're gonna approach the bar Get it right over the knot of our shoelaces, just against our shins. From here, I like to take my thumbs, put them just outside of my thighs so I know I'm in a good hand position. And then I'm pushing my hips back to my thumbs hit my knees and I'm lowering myself down till my hands hit the bar. The next piece would be taking our weight, making sure it is pulled back to my heels. And then we can take the slack out of the bar to make sure my shoulders are tight. So what that's gonna look like is I'm gently kind of pulling up on the bar. You can hear that clicking sound, making sure that my upper back is tight and ready to lift. This is not a super comfortable position and it shouldn't be super comfortable. But what I am noticing is my shins are vertical, my hips are just above my knee, which allows me to turn on my hamstrings and my glutes. So that way when I'm lifting, I'm not using my quads. So what a deadlift's gonna look like By keeping my shins vertical, I'm not hitting my knees or having to go around my knees on the way up, but the bar is staying nice and tight till I clear my knee and then I squeeze my butt so hard and bring the hip to the barbell. If this is something you're working on on your own or maybe you're trying to refresh or work, just work on it in general, I think one of the biggest tips is taking some videos of yourself so you can see what the difference is between what it feels like you're doing and what you're actually doing. There's two cues that we give really often and we're looking for the same thing to happen with both cues and that is either knees back or hips up. And the byproduct of both of those is that we're looking for vertical shins. So if one of those resonates more than the other with you, know that our end goal is to have vertical shins. The reason we want vertical shins is it means that we're using our posterior. Especially in CrossFit, we do tend to see that people tend to be quad dominant and they want to try to deadlift with their quads. And with the vertical shins, that's putting the workload on our backside and making it harder for us to use our quads. A few other fundamental tips we want to talk about is breathing and bracing. Super important when it comes to deadlift and setting up. So that feeling, if somebody was gonna punch you and you kind of brace for that impact or you're gonna lift up furniture or something heavy and you wanna be nice and tight, that's the feeling we wanna be having throughout that entire lift. And by bracing with our midline, it's gonna support our back. Another tip that we wanna think about is keeping our arms long. I see a lot of people that wanna shrug up or bend their elbows at the top of that deadlift, and that's just putting a ton of pressure into our arms. We wanna think about keeping our shoulders pulled back and down and our arms like nice and long because they're, they're just there supporting the barbell like cables. We're not actually lifting and doing the work with our arms, but we're lifting by pushing our feet through the floor and squeezing our butt to open our hips. We're hoping this is beneficial for you guys. In our gym, it's something that we come across really often. People are either being intimidated by the deadlift or it's still being something that gives them some lower back issues. So it, 
if you are having lower back issues, it's all we always try to tell people that that is 100% avoidable. And hopefully these are some fundamental tips to help you guys learn the proper way to pick something up off the floor. If there's other movements like this that you would find value in us breaking down and kind of sharing a few of our ways that we teach and some of the tips that we have, please drop those in the comments below. Also check out our Facebook group. So it's Team Christy and Pat IVX Training. The link's in the description down below and we would love to interact with you and help you guys through these movements and just help you fine tune and work on stuff that maybe you want to work on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all of your support. We love delivering this content to you guys. We love sharing information and we look forward to the next video. So please smash the like button and don't forget to drop those comments on what else you want to see us break down. Have a great day. Living in a living in a high habit, uh, and I said never.